So I'm doing another one of these vlog things, and um, I'm doing it mainly for kind of uh, work out some technical issues, but I'm also, you know, I thought I would con kind of continue what I started with the last vlog where I was talking about uh, Secret Origins and the kinds of, of uh, cartoons I liked on Saturday mornings as a kid. Uh, today I want to talk about the uh, the first comic book I ever bought, or the first comic book I can remember buying. Um, it would have been about... March or April of 1968. I was five years old at the time, and the reason I remember the date is because I can tell you exactly what the comic book was. Because years later, uh, when I was going through my collection, I became very, very excited to discover that I had a copy of Iron Man number one. Now, um, don't get excited, because um, number one... I found out that it was utterly worthless. It was literally worth the recycle value of the paper because I had in those days when you kids today, you have no idea how easy you have it. There were no such things as uh, superhero um, toys or superhero action figures, except there was one guy, it was a, it was a kind of a knockoff of, of G.I. Joe called Captain Action. So he was kind of a G.I. Joe guy, but they had some licensed outfits for him where you could dress him up literally as like Superman or something. I don't remember which heroes they licensed, but they had some licensed character outfits, but he was basically a, a dress-up doll like G.I. Joe. But because I didn't have a um, any action figures to play with and I had just I had read this story and I wanted to like play out the action I literally I went in and in any page where I could find a full figure of a character I cut them out with scissors and so you know I I, I grabbed this issue of years later decades later I'm like oh my god I have an issue of Iron Man number one and I pull it out and I start paging through it and there's just these fluttering edges of incomplete pages where I've cut figures out. The, the, the issue had been cut to absolute garbage. Um, and now, of course, I don't have it at all anymore because all of my comics were stolen from me a few months ago. Um, and and uh, I miss some of them. <clears throat> Another reason not to get excited so much about Iron Man number one is that it's really not the first appearance of Iron Man. What you have to realize is... Um, a few years ago, I did a video called The Fantastic Four, Their Terrifying Secret. I'll link it right up here. And um, it was basically talking about how uh, when Stan Lee and Jack Kirby were starting the Marvel Universe uh, at a company that had mainly been doing monster comics up until that time, um, they kind of hedged their bets by making The Fantastic Four sort of a monster comic. Um and there are some similar aspects to, say, the early Amazing Spider-Man, which I may, um, which I may cover in another video soon. I'm going to talk about that later. Um, but what happened was uh, they introduced the Fantastic Four. The Fantastic Four was a big success. Then they introduced the Incredible Hulk in his own book. That one was canceled after about six issues, and so then. Um, for the next few superheroes, they introduced them in horror titles, basically covertly changed the horror titles into superhero titles. Um, Thor was introduced in Journey into Mystery, uh, and that continued under the title Journey into Mystery for about a year, and then it changed into Journey into Mystery with Thor on the cover. Uh, and that ran for about another year or so. There was about two years of journey into mystery before Thor got his own book. Um, there was another book called Tales to Astonish, which had uh, featured uh, Ant-Man, and they also, once Hulk was canceled, they moved him over into Tales, of, uh, Tales to Astonish. And then Iron Man was introduced in a book called Tales of Suspense, which he then shared with Captain America once Captain America was revived by the Avengers. Um, and that ran that way. They introduced Iron Man in 1963, and that ran until March of 1968. Cover date, March of 1968, I need to clarify. March of 1968 was the last issue of Tales of Suspense, and also the last issue of Tales to Astonish. April of 1968, 
They took the Captain America feature from Tales of Suspense, gave him his own book. They took the Hulk from Tales to Astonish, gave him his own book, and took the other two leftover characters, Iron Man and Submariner, and put them together in their own book for one issue in April of 1968. And then in May of 1968, they just let Submariner go because he was boring anyway, and they um, they gave Iron Man his own book. Um, but because the books were generally cover dated a couple of months ahead of the actual publication and release date, um, the book would have been on the stands probably March and April was when I would have seen it. Oh, and uh, let me just pop in and say that the reason this was kind of significant um, as far as as Iron Man goes and as far as Marvel goes is that by canceling Tales of Suspense and Tales to Astonish, it was finally Marvel after almost seven years, after uh, more than six years of the Marvel Universe finally throwing in the towel and saying, you know what, we're not holding out this backup anymore. We're not we're not a monster comic company that's dipping our toe in the superhero well. We're a superhero comic company now. And uh and so in that respect, Iron Man number one, that that March, April, May uh publication period of Marvel Comics is actually kind of significant. Back to the previous me. Now I was five years old, as I said, we were in a grocery store, I found it on a spinner rack. My dad said I could have one comic, and so I narrowed it down to two, and I do not remember what the other one was. It was probably a Batman or a Superman, something DC. But I remember being absolutely, I guess, hypnotized by that beautiful Gene Collan artwork, those flowing lines and those those graceful figures, because I, I told my dad I wanted to get the Iron Man. And my dad did a thing which, you know, the kind of thing that, that you would just look at and say, this is a man who doesn't get comics, like, on any level. Because he took the Iron Man number one, and he kind of paged through it. And he took the other comic I had, kind of paged through that. And then he looked. And then he said, are you sure you want to get this one? Because... Look at how big those pictures are. You don't you don't get as many pictures on the page. It looks like there's more pictures in this other one. It's almost like like comparing two uh comparing two music albums and saying you want to pick the one with the more upbeat songs because you get a better you uh the cost per note is better. Um but looking back now, I wonder if maybe he had a point. Gene Collan used to draw really big panels, like where a lot of artists were using a six-panel or a nine-panel grid on a page. <clears throat> I think Kirby a lot of times went for six. Gene Collan was often doing only three and four panels a page, and that was part of what made his art so gorgeous, but it also made the story seem a little less substantial in any given issue. And, you know, if I were being generous to my dad now, um, and I would go back and ask him about it, except I, don't, I doubt if he even remembers it. I remember it very clearly, because it was like my first comic. But, uh, but maybe he was just saying that you would get more substantial story with more panels to tell the story. I don't know. But I, I thought it was weird at the time, and I've thought it was funny ever since. And so anyway, that's the story of my first comic, five years old. And it started a kind of, I won't say a lifetime obsession, because along about the mid-90s, I stopped really reading comics much but I still love them and I obviously still think about them. So anyway, I'm about to uh, make a final decision and launch into the production of my next video. I've got, I've got like three different choices that I'm, I'm kind of on the, on the fence about. One is a video about uh, Star Wars, the original Star Wars movie. Um, one is a video uh, where I've gone back and reread the first 30 issues of Spider-Man and just talking about um, 
how revolutionary it was for the time and how it stacks up today, how it holds up today. And, um, geez, I don't even remember what the third one was. I don't remember what the third one was. So, um, well, for now, let's just say uh, two choices then. And uh, if you'd like to express a preference, uh, make, make a preference in the, make a comment uh, below. The people who subscribe to my Patreon are gonna, you know, get, actually get the, the final say on this, but uh, if there's not a pref if they don't express a preference and you do, you know, you've got a shot. You help me pick my next, my next video. Um, I'm gonna try to, if this works out, if this technical issue works out, I'm gonna try to uh, put up stuff like this a little more often and talk a little bit more in depth, the kind of behind the scenes of, uh, of you know, kind of talk about my past and, and how I got into this and, and where, like, where the name Hero Go Home comes from and, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. I love comments, and, uh, and um, I will see you next time. Bye.